Hello and welcome to another tutorial of Microsoft Word 2010. In this tutorial we will be exploring citations, bibliographies, and footnotes. In order to start the process, I've created this document called Citations and Footnote in which I have preloaded some items, I have converted them into bulleted lists and applied some formatting. Let's look at the first line here. It says this list is compiled by Professor Saad Yusuf. So let's say if I want to add some information about this person on this page. Since I do not want this information to be repeated on every page, therefore I won't be adding it to a header or a footer because header or a footer has this tendency of repeating their content on every page. If you only want to put some information down at the bottom of the same page, and that information only has to remain on the current page and is not to be shared with any of the other pages then it is done through footnote in order to apply footnotes we click on references tab and then we click on insert footnote what footnote does it automatically adds a number towards the bottom of the screen or bottom of the page and add, it adds the same number to the right of the resource that reflects the details of the number. So down here I can come down and, and write some details about um, computer science faculty member. And then I can scroll up, and here's my number, and here is the details of that number. So this basically footnote can be used. Let me zoom out so that you can see. It will going to appear towards the bottom of the screen, and on the same page where the footnote appears. And you can add as many footnotes as you may like. If you add another footnote, then I'm going to just number it number two and just put number two down there. For example, just to test it, let me zoom in again. And let's say if I want to add a footnote here, leading programming languages. So if I click insert footnote again, and I would like to type here high level languages. So now as you can see, it has started counting my footnotes, one, two, and also wherever they appear in the document, it names it, it numbers it one, two. So that's about the footnote. Now let's look at the citations and then bibliographies. A lot of the time when you're doing a research you need to remember a lot of your resources you just write them down manually at the end of the document and then you need to worry about all these different formatting the MLA, the APA and all that little stuff. In order to ease down this process of uh, putting your citations down in one place Microsoft Word gives you a very cool a uh, group called Citations and Bibliography that we're going to explore right now. Let's say if I want this content, like leading programming languages, let's say it comes from a book and I would like to cite the resource of that book. Then what I can do is I can place my insertion point here, right at that line, wherever I want to place my citation, and I can click on Insert Citation and then I can click Add New Source. As I click Add New Source, it gives me a dialog box. In this dialog box, the book is the default type of source that's already selected. Here, I'm going to just make up a book. For example, a uh, book written by Saad Yusuf, and the title of the book is Programming Languages, and it was written in 2012, um, uh, somewhere like, and the publisher was Moon Press, for example. It's all made up. Please don't start looking for this book. Um, and then, as I click OK here, you are going to notice it adds the last name of the author, comma, the year, then it went, the book was published as a citation right in front of the source. If I want to use the same citation in front of leading web technologies, I can just simply go down under Insert Citations and click on the already existing citation that I've added to the sources. And here you go, the same citation get to repeat. Now if I want to record a new citation for leading web browsers, then I can go under Insert Citations, 
and then I can say add new source and instead of a book let's say if I want to choose a website as I choose a website it needs to know who wrote the article so let's say Sam Smith somebody named Sam Smith wrote the article the name of the page was browser wars the website that I found it on let's say is um, browser info in the year 2012 month of let's say May the date was 24th this reason the reason this information is required is because when was this article actually published that's what we don't want to know if you don't have this information then you must uh, enter the year axis the month axis and the day axis so that we know when you accessed it if you put in bold information then that sort of kind of gives an overview when the information was really published and when you view it for example if you're writing an article about mobile phones and you say well the latest or the greatest technology in the mobile phone is 2G now of course a lot of you know that 4G is the latest not 2G therefore the article that you are citing must have been written a long time ago so if you cite the date then probably you're going to help us identify what was actually written now so anyway so over here under um, year axis I would like to put let's say uh, 2012 month axis August and the day axis was 24th now it also needs to know the URL of the place the URL always starts with HTTP colon colon HTTP's hypertext transfer protocol that's a language that is used by the browsers to understand the page now www dot let's say uh, made up browser info.com I'm just making up this website so now if I click OK here and that will be the resource that will be cited in front of Smith 2012 now let's say if I want to add some more information or change an existing information on any of my resources that I've created or any of my citations that I've created then in the citations and bibliography group I have managed sources if I click manage sources it lists both of my sources out here the first one is the web source the second one is the book source and you can see over here in the preview that both of them have been written in APA fifth edition format because that was a format that was currently picked under style so you can always change I'll show you later on what are the formats available under APA style uh, under the style drop down so for now if I want to change some information or add some information to my book so if I click book and then I can click edit and then I need to see other properties so I click show all bibliography properties the one that have the red asterisk to their left are the required ones so let's say if I go down and say okay um, this book that I am referring to has 700 pages and the edition that I'm referring to is the third edition so I can add all of these little information and then as I click OK here now it says some changes have taken place would you like to record these changes or not so if I say yes I would like to record the changes and I want my master list to be updated okay and the current document to also be updated and reflect the change I say okay yes so here it goes it reflects makes changes and as I click close now you will be able to see some information as I go about inserting uh, the bibliography so let's say if these are the two sources of citations I wanted to create and I have listed them so what I've shown you is how to create um, a citation for a book and how to create a citation for a website and then how to make changes to a citation for a book and how to use the same citation in multiple places now next what we'll be looking at is how to insert a bibliography so I'm going to force and start a new page and I would like to go under insert and click page break so my current page breaks and I go to the new page of course it thinks that I want to continue with the bullet so I would like to press the backspace a couple times so that my insertion point now aligns with the beginning of the ruler now I would like to insert my bibliography so for that I would have to visit rather go back to the references tab in the references tab I will now going to click bibliography and now in bibliography I have two options either to go with bibliography or to go with works cited so now I can 
click here on bibliography which is automatic bibliography that includes all sources associated with this document so anything that you put under your sources when you are adding your citations all of them will be listed over here in the APA format so if I click here voila in one click I will going to have all my sources cited here so as you can see my web sources cited here as well as my um, a book source is cited here. So you can see they're cited as last name, first name, first initial, and then the date when they were published, um, and the name, um, and the edition for the book, and so on and so forth. So this is how you can be working with bibliographies. As far as the styles is concerned, there's several different styles available to you. You can be going with APA 5th edition, 6th edition, a Chicago 15th edition, and Ghost, and Harvard, and IEEE, and ISO, and MLA. Um, it's all of these different editions. So based on whatever your requirements are, you, you should first choose um, whatever style you want, and then you can start citing your, um, inserting your citations. So anyway, that's all for now for me for this tutorial. Catch you pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you for watching.